Welcome to the city. I'm Anthony Wilson, the Public Information Officer for the City of San Angelo. And joining us today is the Vice President for the San Angelo Convention and Visitors Bureau, Pamela Miller. Pamela, thanks for being with us. You bet. Thanks for having me. Now, for people who aren't aware of what the Convention and Visitors Bureau is and does, tell us a little bit about that. Our major responsibility is heads in beds. And what we mean by that is we are responsible for being the marketing arm of the city to potential tourists to get them to come to our area, whether that be as part of a group tour, an individual, a family, or even at times a relocation assistance. Um, we get out there and tell how great our wonderful city is and try to get people to come and stay in our hotel rooms hence the heads and beds. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, tourism. How important is local tourism to our economy? Oh, local tourism is so important to our community and the better, the better we do at tourism, the better we do as a city. These folks come to our town, they pay occupancy tax to be in our hotel rooms. They also pay sales tax when they're out in our restaurants, out in our retail establishments, and spend a lot of money in our community um, funding that normally wouldn't be here from the folks that live here. Um, it's, it's a great program to kick back occupancy tax to keep occupancy and tourism going in your community. But those other things like sales tax, those affect all areas of keeping your community going. So we couldn't do it without great tourism. So tell us a little bit about how you get the word out about what San Angelo has to offer to tourists. Well, we go to a lot of different trade shows and, and those, some of them are consumer shows. So for instance, we might be at the Albuquerque Balloon Festival or we might be at the Texas State Fair. I have just returned from the Winter Texan show in McAllen to get all of those winter Texans to use us as their route home. Come through San Angelo and make a stop and see a lot about our community. We do some Facebook advertising. We advertise a lot print media throughout Texas, but we also do some national publications also like Better Homes and Gardens, uh, Family Circle, uh, True West Magazine, and we try to be a little tease so people will get on the website or our Facebook and learn more information. And what are some of the top local attractions that you promote in order to try to attract people to come to our community? Oh, we have so many, but Fort Concho is probably the first one that comes to mind. We, we are part of the Texas Sports Trail, but we have the best restored post-Civil War fort west of the Mississippi. Nobody else can say that. We have a wonderful museum of fine art that the museum on any given day is a great masterpiece, but it brings in different exhibits throughout the year, ever-changing and top quality, and also a lot of great events. We have a historic Bordello Museum, another thing there's not many communities that have. And of course, our international lily garden. We have international acclaim, those hybrids that are from all over the world. And we have a lot of unique things like our concho pearls. You can visit a goat farm, a sheep farm, a lot of very unique opportunities. So what are some of the biggest challenges to getting tourists to San Angelo and how do you go about combating those challenges? We always go to a trade show with a map because people never seem to know where we're located. But it's great to start them off showing we are virtually in the center of Texas and you can get here from anywhere. Uh, we try to get them to um, learn about the secondary routes that we have to offer because we don't necessarily have an I-10 or an I-20 going through the middle of town but the transportation to get here is very, very easy, and um, they need to come give us a chance. So when people are visiting San Angelo for the first time, what's the typical reaction that you get from those tourists? They're always surprised. They want to come back. They want to tell their friends to come visit. One of the top reasons people come is because they've had a recommendation from friends or family that had been here before. But we're always a surprise. You know, people think of West Texas as dry, barren, and ranches and rodeos. And we have that. But we also have an oasis with lakes and rivers and international lily gardens and things that they really would not expect to see here. So how would you rate yourself as far as your success in attracting tourists to San Angelo? I think we've been very, very positive. We've, um, our occupancy has grown. 
um, over the last five years. We had a rough time last year when the occupancy rates were up quite a bit and we combated that, but we've tried very hard to keep relationships strong with folks and get them to come when the rates come down later. Now the other half of your job is trying to attract conventions and conventioneers to San Angelo. Talk a little bit about how you go about doing that. Well, we work a lot, believe it or not, with our local community and finding out what organizations our friends and peers are members of. From there, we find a lot of conventions that are regional or state conventions that we might be able to talk to the person in charge and bring them here. We also belong to organizations like Meeting Planner International, Texas Society of Association Executives, uh, Texas Convention and Visitors Bureaus. And in those organizations, we continually get leads about groups that are planning to uh, do a convention in whatever year in the future. Um, we go after that. We actually do a bid process. And in that bid process, we bring those planners here and show them around. Uh, it's called a site tour, what we have to offer. And again, tease them a little bit and show them all the nice extras we can offer for them here in San Angelo. And what are some of the successes that you've enjoyed in luring conventions to San Angelo? Well, it's always great when they go home and they fill out that final evaluation sheet and it talks about the hospitality here. But that is probably the number one thing that we hear is how they were treated when they were here. Uh, we have actually gone after some groups that are probably a little bit bigger than we could normally handle, but we find a way here to make it work. Uh, I think, for example, the Catholic Youth Organization, and we had to use both our convention center and our coliseum to make it work. But um, we always try to find a solution to whatever obstacle they give us and bring them here to San Angelo. You mentioned that they receive an excellent reception whenever they come here to San Angelo. Do you think that's because it's a little bit more special to us here locally when we get a convention as opposed to maybe a place like Arlington where they see one every other day? I think that's exactly what it is. You know, so often in a Houston or a San Antonio or we're in Arlington, you know, this is the way it is. Here we can put together a specialized program things that you probably couldn't do in a larger city, and we spend time with our client. Our servicing here is unsurpassed. We hear that all the time. And what sort of a difference does that make as far as being able to lure other groups that may not even be affiliated with the group that had a good time here in San Angelo? I think, again, it's um, people out there talking about us, the friends and family, and somebody went back from a convention and tells their friend who's a member of another organization what a great time they had in San Angelo. They've never been there and they bring it up to their group and suddenly we have another bid that we can put forward. One of the challenges that you've had in attracting conventions here to San Angelo is uh, for a long time the lack of a full service uh, hotel that is one with a restaurant. We have that now in the Clarion Hotel which is adjacent to the convention center. It now has the Black Sheep restaurant within it. How much of a difference do you think having that hotel located next to this facility, the convention center, is going to make in giving you a, a bigger, maybe an arrow in your quiver in order to try to attract some of those uh, conventions to San Angelo? It's already making a difference. We're getting phone calls from groups that in the past have said, you know, that's just not going to work for us. We have to have a nicer hotel by the convention center, and now they want to talk about coming back in the future. And beyond that, we have another one in renovation, which is very close to that same area, that will also have meeting space and full service, and another one going in over on the hotel corridor by the loop that will have full service. So we're continuing to grow and continuing to have more product out there. Of course, we all see the proliferation of hotels being built uh, here in San Angelo. Uh, what sort of impact do you think that's going to have on your ability to attract conventions? I think it's going to be very positive. You know, we lost business, especially over peak times like rodeo, that we just didn't have enough room to put our people. Uh, when the oil business started coming in, we needed so many more rooms than we have. And now we have a great variety out there. We have a lot of different price points for people. And frankly, now we have more hotel rooms to support a bigger convention center. Uh, something we'd like to see happen in the future. Of course, you mentioned with so many hotel rooms being 
uh, reserved in the past year by oil field workers and oil companies. What sort of impact did that have on your ability to, to draw visitors of all sorts here to San Angelo? It was very negative. It was a tough year last year. Um, but again, we worked very hard on keeping our reputation strong. We took those phone calls when people were complaining. We said, stay with us. We have 12 new hotels that are being built more that we continue to hear about. And it's all about supply and demand. Those prices are going to come back down. And please stay with us. We want to have your group here. And now we're making those follow-up calls. And like I said, a couple that have said no are now talking to us about, OK, maybe maybe we'll come back now in 2016. So maybe looking at the recent past, but maybe even more importantly, looking ahead, how successful have you been and how successful do you expect to be moving forward in attracting conventions? Well, we always wish we had more. Uh, 2015 is, is pretty slow, just because we couldn't bid last year, but already 2016 is filling up. And again, we've got two in 2016 that are great, huge groups for us. Um, the Eastern Star Group, which is really um, as big as 900 people, that's a big one for us. And we're going to host the Texas Police Olympics, which is wonderful. We did the Fire Olympics a few years back, and to have that under our belt will be wonderful. We've been talking with Pamela Miller. She is the Vice President of the San Angelo Convention and Visitors Bureau. And when we return, we'll be speaking with Justin Jonas. He's the Executive Director of the San Angelo Stock Show and Rodeo Association. But first, we're going to spotlight another outstanding city employee, Jade Bauckham. My name is Jade Bauckham. I worked for the city for a little over a year, and I'm the Administrative Assistant for IT. Uh, you know, I work a lot with IT and I started out just administrative duties, but now I'm kind of getting more into the tech aspect of it. So I'm doing a lot more working on computers, doing a lot of software updates. And my main thing is, is I do the HTE security for the city. I needed more of a career path. So I wanted to start here and see where I would end up. And I didn't think I'd end up actually being more of an IT person, but um, you know, I really do like it. I like working on computers and I've learned a lot in the year that I've worked here. The biggest thing is the people I work with. Uh, the city has some great people and I'm not just saying that, they really are my friends. You know, I talk to them on the weekends and I like just the atmosphere that I'm around. You learn something new every day, um, especially with technology, how it's always up to date and new things happen every day. You know, what was Good yesterday is not good for today, so we're constantly learning, trying to figure out what's up to date. I did enjoy a lot the Vision Internet, you know, getting us a new website because the old one was very, a little outdated, but uh, I enjoyed doing that a lot. You know, I, I like the team that we worked with, and right now, United Way, kind of running the fundraiser campaign, that's a pretty big project, and I like everyone that's helping out and raising money for a good cause. I measure success with how I'm happy at the end of the day. I and I also like coming to work. You know, I don't wake up in the morning I'm like, oh, I have to go to work today. You know, I love the people I'm around. I love what I do. It's it's very rewarding. You know, we do a lot with helping. Our customers are the people that work for the city. So when I can help a friend out, you know, if they're having problems with their computer or something's going on with them, if I can help them out, then I think that's success. Probably that I'm an IT tech girl. I know, you know, you you don't see it as much as you see men, um, but I do I do love it. I like it a lot, and it's it's very rewarding to know that it's it's not a field for everybody. And I didn't think it was for me. And seeing where how far I've come since I started here, it's it's pretty rewarding. Oh man, well I play with my three year old a lot. We hang out. He's kind of my best friend. And I do play volleyball. I'm a, I'm a volleyball coach. So I play and coach and give lessons. And I like to work out a lot too. 23 years I've lived here and I love it. It's a great place to live. I'm very rooted here. I've, my whole family's here. So I've been here a while. I think a good day at work is probably just getting what I need accomplished, you know, making sure all of my projects are done, all of my work for that day is completed. A lot of what I do is time sensitive, so meeting deadlines is, is very, you know, it's a good day if I can get those done. Just enjoying it, you know, I, 
I'm young, and so I'm, I'm still going to college, still working on that stuff, but I think just hanging out with the people who I love, my family, my friends, my son, and just enjoying San Angelo. Welcome back to the city. We are now joined by Justin Jonas. He is the executive director of the San Angelo Stock Show and Rodeo Association. Justin, thank you for being with us. Yeah, thanks for getting me here. Well, of course, it's almost uh, rodeo time. The rodeo this year is going to be February 13th through the uh, 28th, and tickets are now on sale. I want to tell our viewers, if you want some more information about where to go to get tickets, how much they cost, and the performances, go to our website, which is cosatx.us slash news. It'll be the top item there. But, uh, but I want you to talk a little bit about what's planned for this year's rodeo. Yeah, we're really excited. It's the 82nd year, you know, many years ago, 82 years ago, you know, our, our town was in, uh, it was basically the depression was really going on and our civic events uh, director for the city of San Angelo came up with a uh, idea to have a, have a stock show, a fat stock show, bring everybody to town, let everybody socialize and try to lift the spirit of San Angelo. And it, ba and it worked. And the next year they put for entertainment, they, they started a rodeo. And here we are today. And uh, that spirit of uh, socializing and having a good time and being hospitable is still here and everybody sure loves it. Well, and of course, every top uh, cowboy and cowgirl on the professional rodeo circuit comes to compete in San Angelo each year. Explain why that is. You know, I tell everybody anytime we have any kind of interview is that San Angelo is the most, I would say that our crowd is so knowledgeable in rodeo and all of the cowboys know it. When they come here, they have to perform and they have to be at their best. There's times when even in our rope and fiesta or in our rodeo, they get booed if they don't put 110% and they come here and they want to win over the fans in San Angelo. You can talk to any any world champion that's been through, that's been many years of world champion or a cowboy just starting out, they want to come and they want to compete in front of San Angelo because in that Coliseum, even though it's small, I wish it was bigger, hopefully one day we'll get it bigger, but that Coliseum, the energy that is created in there is second to none. And of course you offer one of the biggest prize purses on the entire professional rodeo tour. How are you able to do that? There's, there's no way we could do it unless it was without our sponsorship and all of the, the people that put the money together for the, you know, the city. The whole city of San Angelo gets behind us. You'll see, you know, I always laugh at Tom, our marketing director, when you look at our, our uh, the arena wall and you see so many, uh, you see so many logos, so many banners and people that are, are behind us that it kind of looks like a minor league uh, baseball team. You see, you see so many advertisement, but Everybody wants to support us and they want to support the rodeo and they come in and that's what drives our purse up. Now this year you've uh, made some changes to the schedules to ensure that every one of those top rodeo cowboys and cow cowgirls competes during one of your performances. Talk a little bit about what you're doing there. Yeah, you know one of our things is we've had, we're, we're one of the only rodeos, us and Cheyenne, that have such a large slack to where if you've got a PRCA card, you've got a chance to come and win in San Angelo and you could win our rodeo. So we've always had that to where if you're a cowboy, you can come win in San Angelo. But our thing is we have such knowledgeable fans that when we have a slack that we used to have over in the spur, that they get two chances and then the top uh, times of those two chances moved over into our rodeo. Well, we lost world champions. Cody Ohl or, we, or Fred Whitfield or some of those big name ropers might miss a calf in our slack, which they were here, but they didn't even get to make it into the Coliseum. So some of our loyal fans that you know are so knowledgeable didn't even get to see them, you know, and they were here. So what we did is we're having basically you've got to, we're, we're still having slack. If you have a PRCA card, you're gonna you got a chance to win San Angelo and it's still two head to get into the final. So the best times are the two head. But what we did with the, with the PRCA is that we allowed, or we asked for the top 50 guys in the world to do their two calves or do their two bulldog and steers or do their two team rope and runs or their barrel racing runs in the Coliseum. That way those two that they get their chances are in front of our fans. So if Cody Ole misses or something, he's going to be there the next night too. They're going to be twice in each, you know, in a performance back to back. So if they miss one, they might not make it to our finals, but at least they're in front of our fans. But at the same time, if you're just getting started and you do our slack, that's going to be in the middle of the week. 
If you do run in our Slack and your time is the best, you can still make it to our final performance and win our rodeo. And you've got some clowns that are crowd favorites again this year over the course of your three-week run. So talk a little bit about your, your clown entertainment. Yeah, you know, we, we, we're a rodeo. We don't have our big-name entertainers. Obviously, we can't pay $750,000 to have a, a huge entertainer come in because that's what they cost. Everybody wants us to bring in a, a big-name entertainer to come and sing, you know, right after the rodeo. Well, there's 750000 minimum, you know, these big names that we really want. So we pride ourselves on having a good clown and having the best rodeo that we can put forth to our crowd. And, and, and I think that we're, the San Angelo is very well known for that. But, you know, last year, Keith Isley had been here many, many years, and we loved him. Honestly, I would love to have just kept him on. But he himself offered, he wanted to step out because he didn't want to get old here. He didn't want San Angelo to go, oh, it's the same old clown, you know. Possibly he wants to come back in a few years, and he wanted somebody else to come in. Well, Justin Rumford, he's the, the clown of the year for the last two years in the PRCA. He's a new upcoming guy, real funny guy, and he hasn't ever been here. He wants to come to San Angelo just like all the PRCA Cowboys want to come, and we're going to have him the first weekend. Now, he had a glitch with his uh, scheduling, so he could only be here for the first weekend, but then we thought, you know, now that we have three weekends of rodeo, that it would be best if we brought in a different clown. And so for the next two weekends we've got uh the wild child who was here many years ago with the motorcycle extremely crowd favorite and he's looking very forward to coming your last night of your run february 28th is your scent shootout for people who don't know what that is talk about it it's something we started a few years ago with cinch and us in houston were the the first two that started this and it's one of the one of the the most exciting parts of uh, i think in rodeo you know, one of the things that all of us in committees that we have many meetings all over the nation. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, you know, on Saturday, if you can turn on ABC and you can watch lacrosse. Now, saying nothing bad against lacrosse, I personally feel like rodeo is a more of an exciting sport that why can't we get on a major network? Well, one of the things that I feel like the PRCA and possibly committees have have lacked in the past is promoting our cowboys and showcasing our big stars. And as soon as these cowboys become big name stars, there's a chance that we could maybe get a major network to come in. So we have to make it exciting. And one of the things that rodeo, it's been hard to do is you have several performances and then you get a winner. Okay. And the finals is very, you know, it's, it's real exciting because you finally get a champion of your rodeo. Well, we wanted one event that you would get a champion that night when they start out there at ground zero but the one at the at the end with the best score or fastest time is your champion and he gets awarded and it's something that we brought in with five events we did all the rough stock we did bull riding bareback riding saddle bronc riding and then we did calf roping because this is san angelo and we got to have calf roping and then barrel racing and we have five events and we bring we uh invite the top cowboys and cowgirls in the world to compete on that night and there's eight of them okay so they all do their first run or their first ride and the top four from that come back and they compete again for the second time that night and then the the one who's winning uh, you know at the end the highest score or fastest time is your champion but then another thing that we've added is we assured that you know not only are the cowboys the best in the world but you know the bucking stock is just as important as the Cowboys. And we have, you know, uh, Pete Carr is gonna bring in some of the, the wildest horses that we've ever had in our shootout. You know, that the whole last weekend, whole last week is gonna be Pete Carr's rodeo, and he's bringing in some of the stock that's gonna make it even more exciting. And those, a lot of those bucking horses and bucking bulls have a resume that's even longer than the Cowboys, so they're just as exciting to watch as the Cowboys are. Of course, we always like to focus on the rodeo, but the real economic engine behind this event is the livestock show, uh, and it's such a huge show. Talk a little bit about why that is so important to San Angelo. There's nothing, you know, about you, 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 you hit the nail on the head right there, that, the, you know, San Angelo stock show is the largest economic impact to the city of San Angelo. And what that is, is, you know, many years ago, those buildings that, you know, it's hard to believe they're over 10 years old now because they still look, you know, brand new and we're so proud to have them. So because for many, many years, it was just an open top barn that if it was cold, you froze, you know, yourself. And now the taxpayers uh, came together, you know, over 10 years ago and built all of those facilities. And these 
exhibitors come to town. I remember, you know, I'm not from San Angelo, but I grew up in New Braunfels, and I remember, you know, my dad insisting on us coming to San Angelo, and at first, I, you know, Young didn't realize, well, that's not a big town, you know, it's not the big city, and he said, but, you know, they want us to come there. I mean, they make you feel welcome, and that still happens today. You know, now we've got beautiful facilities for them to come and they can show in, but we have so many, you know, we have right at a thousand volunteers that are just so overwhelming, um, welcoming to people that come in that they leave here uh, feeling like, you know, those people really wanted us here. And they come here and they, they stay in our hotels, they eat in our restaurants, they shop in our shops. So when you have so many of them, when you have right at 12,000 entries, you know, those are families that come with those entries. That's a lot of people. And in particular, you have the state's largest sheep and goat show. Is that just a, a nod to the tradition here and the heritage here in San Angelo? Well, you're, you're right. You know, this is the, the still in my mind, it's always going to be the sheep and goat capital of the world. And on our market division, we pride ourselves in allowing as many entries as possible to where we can have the largest goat and lamb show in the market division. If you go to San Antonio and Houston, obviously those are our two biggest competitors in the nation, and our numbers are larger than theirs. And uh, let's talk very, very briefly about your Midway, because people love going out to the Midway. Mm -hmm. What are you going to have out there for people this year? You know, our, our same carnival that, uh, you know, has come from, you know, many years. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the Bill Haim show it used to be, and now it's changed, but it's son-in-law still running it. You know, like my wife said, she's from San Angelo, and one of the most th the things that she thought, you know, every year was the most exciting to see going in San Angelo, seeing that big, large uh, Ferris wheel. You know, that's always going to be there. But Alan Cockerham is really working with this, and he is every year upgrading his carnival. And he's, and if you've been there, you see how clean it is, you see how safe it is. We've got so much security by it. My gosh, that's one of our largest expenses is the security. We spend, you know, close to $100,000 a year on security alone. And our, our sheriff's department and our police department do a great job of going in there and keeping that secure to make families not worry when they bring their kids in there. And that's what, that's what, we, what it's all about. And one of the, the complaints we've always had is there's no place to sit down once you get your food, once you get your hot dog, or once you get your piece of pizza, whatever it is. Well, we're going to have more room for people to sit down that's going to be covered. There's going to be some picnic tables, a lot more picnic tables with covered areas so the parents can sit down and rest while their kids go and have fun. We've been talking with Justin Jonas. He is the executive director of the San Angelo Rodeo and Stock Show Association. And if you would like more information, go to sanangelorodeo.com, and we hope you'll join us for the next episode of The City.